Did I scare you? I didn't mean to scare you. You know, Halloween's coming up. It's a real spooky time to be around. Don't get freaked out. Be cool, man. Just kidding, man. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about uh, some, some creepy shit, man. Speaking of ghosts and goblins and witches especially, let's talk about Darren Stevens, man. Now, most of you people are like, Darren Stevens, like, from, like, Bewitched, the husband from Bewitched. No. Only people from 07753 know the true Darren Stevens, man. Now, Darren Stevens, a local legend, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you find him in front of Stop and Shop, picking up cigarette butts to smoke. Sometimes you find him talking about how aliens are amongst us. But we shouldn't worry. Other times, you'll find him as the head pupil to my man Theory. As of lately, man, theories like Obi Wan, the Darren Stevens Luke, they like hang out all the time talking about weird things, man. <laughs> but Theory's my brother, you know what I mean? I know Darren Stevens a long time. Apparently, according to Theory, longer than I known. The first time I became aware of Darren Stevens, like, 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 like knew who he was like on a first name basis or he knew me and I knew him I was in a band called Poseidon with my man Scotty and Scotty lived across the street from Darren you know what I mean and I knew Darren from around town of course but I wasn't like personal personal with him you know what I'm saying and we had a band and we used to keep our, our little window open sometimes people would come in and out you know watch us play but Darren would like hang out by the window and just like you know like listen to the band but we could see him, it was our little shadow, you know what I mean? But he thought we couldn't see him. And then, like one night he really got into a song we're playing, we heard him like clapping, he's like, oh shit, I'm clapping and shit. You know what I mean? And Johnny Rock's like, let him in, man, we're real good tonight, let him in. So he came down, Darren Stevens came down, he's a watch us like, yeah. He said, hey man, Bobby G, man, you're an incredible bass player. I was playing bass in that band, yeah. He's like, you're incredible bass, you're the best player I've ever seen. He's getting all excited. I was like, hey man. All choked up, he's like, I see your bass, I play a song with your band. I was like, yeah, man. Took my bass off, like, sure, man. And he proceeded to play the bass for like two and a half hours. And I didn't get to play another song with my band. He played, and I'm not saying, like, you know what I mean, he was better than me. I just say he played bass the rest of the evening until Johnny Rock had to leave, man. Anyway, I'm not mad about it, you know what I mean? I'm just saying that's what happened, you know what I'm saying? And the next day I saw him, I was at the traffic light by this place called Crankles, you know what I'm saying? I seen him, he's like, like Bobby G, man. He ran up to my car window and said, I'll tell you something. They're following me. They're probably following you too. I said, oh, what? And uh, he's like, aliens. I, was like, I don't know if he's fucking with me or whatever, man. I was like, yeah, I know they're following me, man. And they told me they're following you too. And he's like, what? They did? I was like, yeah. And then I seen him a couple of days later at McDonald's with this crazy girl. Who's like older and how missing teeth and shit and was like my daughter was like real afraid of her. I was like, I was like, hey man, let's not uh, let's not talk about you know the aliens like yeah man. How your friend is just chill, you know what I mean? Anyway, man, so I sort of drifted apart after, you know what I mean, Poseidon broke apart, man. And then like, you know what I mean, my man theory's like, no, 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 no. Dan Stevens is he's a renewed man now. He's reformed, he's under my tutelage, man. I've taken him under my wing, I got his medications all checked out, man. You know what I mean? He's a regular guy, man. I think you should feature him on the show. You had Johnny Blade on your show. Johnny Blade was crazy. You know, I said, like, Johnny Blade's my boy, man. I heard Dan Stevens. I'm not saying he's not my boy, but I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying? What am I to talk about? You know what I mean? The time he came down and I like, hijacked my bass. I said, no, no, no. He's a musician. He's a musician. He's an artist. I was like, that's cool, man. He's like, but he's got a cool bass and it's broken. I was like, oh. Uh, tell me, do tell me, you know what I'm saying? Halloween is is, is coming up. I could, this is a spooky motherfucker, you know what I mean? I could definitely, you know, use a little bit of fright, you know what I mean? So, yeah, he's got a bass that's broken, man. He, you know, he's on under my tutelage, you know, we were writing songs together. I was like, that's cool, man. That's cool, man. Yeah, I do, I do it, man. You know, and Dan Steen's my boy, you know what I mean? We hung out, we had a little bonfire not too long ago. We had some beers, man. Dan Steen was cool as hell, man. I had never really hung with him. He was a really personable guy, man. I said, hey, man, I'd be a pleasure. I was all a little buzzed up, man. I pleasured you, basically. He was totally straight, man. We are talking about aliens. No, he was having a good time. We were lighting some fireworks, man. I, I had a blast, man. You know what I mean? So, my man theory is like, you know what I mean? I got the base, man. It was like a whole like process of getting the base, you know what I mean? Darren Stevens, you know? 
He said, I got the bass, man. So the bass is broken, man. I know the bass is broken. I was like, cool, what's wrong with it? The jack's broken, I think. So I saw the sound all fucked. I was like, cool, man. All right, jack, bass, jack. What kind, of, what kind of bass is it? That performed bass. So cool, cool, that performed, man. Cool, man. I'm getting all excited about this shit, man. And so my man Theory, I guess, was talking to Darren, you know what I mean? Darren's like, I guess, ask him a little bit more about the episode, whatever. Like, so I gave him my bass saying, man, what's this episode about? You know what I'm saying? And he's like, he's like, well, you know what I'm saying? about your bass being broke. He's like, my bass ain't broken, bro. What are you talking about? And in theory, I guess, went back and forth with him. And like, he, he's like, he's like talking to Theory about it. And my man Theory, right before he dropped it off, this is it right here, by the way. He said, oh, man, he said, I don't think the, string, the bass is broken at all. Actually, he's told me. They had flat wound strings on. I never, I've never played a bass with flat wound strings on, and I figured it was broken. It sounded weird. This is true shit, man. This is true life. So, he dropped it off to me anyway. I said, "Well, you know what I'm saying, man. You know it wasn't broken." He said, "Why don't you go over it, give it once over when you talk about it?" I was like, "Oh, you know what? I will talk about it, man. You know what I mean? Let's work for me. I'll, you know, clean it up a little bit. We'll talk about it. Make sure it works. And spray it down cleaner. This is a." Uh, a Toby, a Toby Deluxe 4, and it was a Epiphone product that came out, I don't know, about 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Essentially what happened was, in the 70s, there's a luthier called Michael Tobias, who's making these beautiful boutique bases, handmade bases, that, you know what I mean, became like, you know what I mean, like a factory kind of thing, where he became like, you know, making a base called Tobias Base. And those bases, you know what I mean, like, you know, work like a grand now, you know what I mean, from the 80s, you know what I'm saying? And right around 1990, Gibson bought the brand, you know what I mean? Tobias left a couple of years later, you know what I'm saying? Basically, because Gibson did nothing with the brand name. They made a couple of bolt-on models. He had, like, beautiful, like, high-end bases. And they made a couple, like, you know what I'm saying, swag-ass shit. And then discontinued, and the dude left, you know what I'm saying? So fast forward a couple years later, like you know, we spent a lot of money on this on this trademark. Let's make some low end shit. Fuck this motherfucker. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's what they said, man. That's just my conjecture, man. So you know what I'm saying? Gibson sort of made it, instead of calling him Tobias, they called him Toby. I thought it was Toby Tobias, the musician making it. I didn't even know anything about Michael Tobias until I read up on it about Darren Stevens' trick. You know, I didn't know nothing about. It. I thought this was a model after Toby Tobias, man, the musician, who I don't even know. You know what I mean? I just saw, you know what I mean, Toby Tobias on the internet. And I figured Tobias, Toby, I don't know nothing about anything. You know what I mean? I swear to you, I don't know anything. Anyway, so it's Michael Tobias. You know what I mean? They, they made a cheap bass, you know what I mean? Kind of model after his, like, classic form-looking bases. You know what I'm saying? This is it, man. And they used to have a little, some kind of thing here over this where you could adjust the, you know what I mean, little truss rod. But like Darren Stevens lost his shit, man. And he painted it red because he's a character. He's not a character, man. Darren Steve's my boy, man. So I'm going to clean this base up for him, man. And we're going to go over there, man. And we're going to hang out with him, man. We're going to interview him. And we're going to have him display his art to you for Halloween, man. Peace be with you. I'll flip you around and look at it. Hang on. So here it is. It's a little cold out there, right? Leaves starting to pile up. The fall is in full swing, you know what I mean? Winter right around the corner, though. We got November. Right after we eat the bird in November, man, we just start waiting for the snow. That's the end of the fall, man. Anyway, we plug this guy in. There's nothing wrong with it, electronically. Nothing wrong with it electronically, man. So what's this, man? What are you wasting our time for, Bobby G, man? What are you wasting our time for? You know what I mean? This should be Darren, Darren Stevens' kits, man. You got nothing to offer us. Well, 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 there are a couple little problems that I want to kind of resolve. This this knob is like a phantom. It just keeps on spinning around, 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 around. It's not grounded to any kind of lock washer. Likewise, this one. These two are good, though. See, they hit this side and they, they, they stop. That's not good because these are going to keep spinning around and eventually going to break the wire connection between these two pots man that's not cool man hope when i fix this darren doesn't get all mad at me hey man this is the ultra frequency only the aliens can hear man you ruined it i spent my whole life trying to develop the frequency for the aliens man you know what i'm saying imagine that shit chokes me out on the get kit show man anyway at least we don't have to do any electronic work no soldering let's bring it into the laboratory there 
into the monster laboratory. Take a look at it, man. See what we can do to stop these wanderlust knobs, man. They're wandering all over the place. They got mind of their own. They got mind of their own. All right, Toby. See you in the laboratory. In the castle east. <laughs> all right, so we got the cavity open here. The only thing cool about this cavity really is there's got big pots in there. And it's got these cool little uh, sunken sort of threaded ports for machine screws. You know what I mean? You get them with the electronics. That's the only cool part. The uncool part is, you know, this is like uh, some kind of, this is that paint that supposedly is just as good as, you know what I mean, tape. You know what I mean, metal tape. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's got absolutely no, you know what I mean, no kind of lock washer behind these pots at all. Uh, and this pot here is like, a, like you know, one of those special ones, too. So I got some lock washers here, man. This should solve the case, man. Let's put them back on with these nice lock washers behind them. They shouldn't move around anymore. Real tight on there. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly the frequency to reach out to the aliens, too, just in case he has problems with this. You know what I mean? Totally shielded, man. Totally shielded, man. All right, people, see you after we're done, see if it worked. All right, so those lock washers have totally eliminated all those problems, man. We're not moving any more than we need to be. You know what I'm saying? We're good to go on that front. So what I want to do, while this is still open, man, I want to spray out all these electronics with some cleaner. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really giving us any problems. But we're cracked open, man. We might as well just do it up, man. The works. The works for Darren Stevens, man. The works. This Halloween spirit. Woohoo! All right, people. So the electronics, stable. Everything else is pretty much copacetic on this instrument. You know what I'm saying? It's real dirty, though, man. Filthy dirty, man. See that? You know what I mean? Darren Stevens has left his mark on this instrument. Hey, man, it wasn't me, man. It was the aliens, bro. Let's clean it off, man. Clean it off, I'll give you a quick glamour shots, man. You know what I'm saying? A quick glamour shots. Right? And then we'll meet the man himself. Right? And there it is, people. It's real good. Nice. Even that red thing kind of makes it look all gothic, man. You know, it looks like it should. And we got our errant pot, you know what I mean? Situation under control now. Forever. Forever. Forever and ever. I see some ghosts and goblins in the Gibson plan. The master plan to treat Tobias in a shabby manner. You know what I'm saying? Got that bolt on neck, man. Most Tobias's were all. Glued in, neck throughs, man. We all know that, man. Someone's getting the shaft, and it looks like it's Mike Tobias. Anyway, we've talked a lot, man. Haven't we talked a lot? We talked a lot, man. About our friend Darren Stevens. And talk is cheap, people, in this season of ghostly goblinness. There's only one way to really know. You know what I'm saying? There's only one way to. And that's by meaning. Seeking knowledge from. Learning the art of. Our dear friend. Mr. Darren Stevens. Before the alien will get you. And now, for your Halloween pleasure. A man who needs no introduction, but we'll introduce him anyway. The great Mr. Darren Stevens. I have no marker. I'm six feet with no marker. I don't use it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I grew up in uh, an old world meatball spaghetti-o Italian family, and uh, there was a, um, on my grandfather's side of the family. Uh, or Scottish, in Edinburgh. My grandfather was in Edinburgh. And he was a brick, a brick layer. Um, so, uh, 
Brian and Gregory were the boys on his uh, his side. Uh, my aunt Faye, his sister, their sons, Brian and Gregory. I uh, first base I ever had when I must have been uh, seven, nine years old. I don't know why. Nine years, about nine, ten. What drew you to the bass, man? Why did you Why did you pick up the bass, Darren? I really like guitar. Really? But I went back and forth over over the years with. Uh, Guitar. I, I took classical guitar in Bookdell. Uh, That's cool, man. I've been around musicians in Long Branch and uh, a, lot of, a lot of underground death metal bands I hung out with in the 80s. And not to say their names because I don't know if I should. I, I was copyright on a shit and you know, it trouble. Uh, RP, you know, it's one of them. Rip up a You know, some, some band like that, you know. So, so this Toby bass. When did you get your uh, hands on this beautiful oh, Tobias? I, I, I'm also I I just fool around with instruments. Like I don't really play. I play with them. It was a pleasure working on that instrument for you. I just was uh, yeah. wondering how long you had it, or you, know, you got a little story about um, maybe when you obtained it, or you don't really recall, or no. Um, I sold. A, I I did a painting. And my first. Um, I draw. It's been in my family art. It's been in my family. Cool. In, uh, Italy and uh, so uh, my my grandmother had the artistic ability. My mother had it, That's it passed on to me. So I'm more or less a drawer and a painter, not so much a musician. But I I rather take a shot at musicianship and art. For some, it's fun. Right, it's, I it's, it's it's fun. So uh, with the spider scale, uh, so it's. This motion and it looks like a creepy spider. And that's the full stretch on it, but the short stretch would be only three fingers. Doesn't matter. Once you use the three fingers in the spider scale, the pinky just hangs out and eventually just gets condition just from hanging there with the other fingers working. So you go. This backwards part is hard because it's like it's kind of fucked up because you're going and where do you go from there oh, that's a backwards forward spider scale so you could you could figure out just from the the main bass spider scale you can go off on all kinds of crazy different config even this is considered part of a spider scale not just a roll King. Uh, it's a Joukowsky classical. Uh, it's the only thing I ever learned the whole period of time. I went to Brookdale for classical guitar. I sucked immediately. I couldn't even tune my guitar past any of the whole fucking class. So I just sat in that classroom with BC Rich Warlock going with the fuck. So I go to, yes. after the class, I wait for a whole class and then I, I just sit back there and, and I go to somebody and say, Can you teach me a little thing on, uh, on the guitar? So he, he taught me Hall of Mountain King, so basically that's, uh, I fucked up, it's tight strings, Bobby tight, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Tune them. Like So happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Peace be with you from our great friend, Peace. Darren Stevens. 
Toby, Tobias, four oh, base. Oh, let me, let me, let me get, let me, one, before we leave, uh, one I did a paint, why I got this base, right? Uh, I did an acrylic painting, it sold for $300 by Avid Art Collector in Florida. Excellent. So with the money from the, uh, painting, I bought the base, and the base is just everything to me. You know, I think... I made something, and then I bought something. I think, actually, that story parallels to the first bass player from the Beatles, I believe his name was Stu. He, he sold one of his paintings and bought a bass with it, and the rest is history. That's great. But he got kicked out of the Beatles, and Paul McCartney took his place because he's a vicious bastard. Peace be with oh. you. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. God bless you, Darren. Thank you so Peace. much, my brother. My brother right there. <laughs>